But, uh, you know, I, I did want to share this. You know, certainly there's, there, there's numerous uh, esoteric or hidden indicators of paganism in uh, society like Freemasonry that, uh, you know, you've, you've mentioned here. But the, uh, the most obvious outer sign that locates, so to speak, a, uh, a church is whether or not the church is incorporated with the beast government. And, um, and so, I, I, in all fairness, I have to ask you, uh, you know, what is your position on that? And also, uh, uh, specifically, is your church incorporated? All right. We are absolutely opposed to that. Uh, we are not 501c3. Here's what I believe about that. I believe that, you know, you've heard of the abomination that maketh desolate. Yeah. As spoken by the prophet Daniel, okay? Now, and it says in the book of Mark, standing where it ought not, okay? And I see these churches with that American flag in there, and they're 501c3. They are signed up with the government. They're an extension of the government, and that flag in that church indicates that they are subservient to this thing, to this beast system. So the, the 501c3, uh, I look at it this way. There are so many churches preaching baloney that it has to be inspected by the government. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. And Pastor, Jay, my, uh, Pastor uh, William Raymond lost his church at Salem. And again, the website, ladies and gentlemen, and we'll have him on to talk about 501c3 churches, is uh, uh, the church, uh, church at Salem.info. The church at Salem.info. Uh, anything else, uh, Pastor Raymond? No, that, that's it. Uh, I, you know, that's pretty much the acid test, uh, I, I believe, for, for anyone that calls them ser- themselves a, uh, uh, a servant and an, uh, uh, an ambassador or a bond servant for the Christ. That, that pretty much separates the men from the boys, so to speak. Okay. So uh, it was good to hear that. So, so thank you very much, Pastor, and uh, keep up the good work. God bless you, my friend. Thank God you very much. You. The, yes. Thank you for the phone call. Let's go to Dave in Arkansas. Dave, you're on the air. Go ahead, please, with Pastor David J. Meyer. Hello. Uh, Hi there. Yeah, uh, if you look up the word uh, pharmacy in the dictionary or in Strong's Concordance, it will say a poisoner or a spellcaster. And as, as I want to get straight on what, how this relates to what you're talking about. Well, actually, yes, the use of uh, drugs for occult purposes is sorcery and it is witchcraft. Pharmakia is the, the Greek word from which you get the word pharmacy. And especially, especially these mind-bending drugs that they hand out like M&Ms uh, to the school children and so forth, Ritalin and all these other different things, anything that will bend the brain, they, what you're doing is you're feeding demon spirits. They have an appetite. And, of course, the, the professionals call it an addiction you can become addicted. What you've done is you've picked up a demon if you're addicted. Ooh, you're, that's our whole, interesting. Our whole, you've got a, our whole, you've got our, our whole uh, healthcare system is then based on witchcraft, isn't it? It is. Okay. It absolutely is. And now the Eli Lilly Company, and this is no secret, it's in my newsletter, the Eli, Eli Lilly Company a spokesman said they're going to start putting drugs in to the uh, infant formulas for babies um, mm-hmm. and uh, to to give them a gradual, you know, to pacify them so that they don't uh, have this attention deficit disorder. Mm-hmm. No mind of their own. All right. right. Thank you very, very much for the phone call. Uh, whoa, that's another hit right there. Thank you, Dave in Arkansas. Let's go to Larry in Louisiana. Larry, you're on the air with Pastor David J. Meyer. Go ahead, please. Yeah, how about that six-pointed star? That's a devil star, isn't it? Especially the one with the circle around it. And what about this, they say, name Yahweh? Isn't that uh, from demonic times? So go ahead and tell me about that. Well, first of all, the, the uh, six-pointed star is known as the hexagram. It's the most powerful symbol in witchcraft. And it actually is comprised of two Tri- two equilateral triangles. One, the one point up is the male element. The one point down is the female element, and they're intertwined to bring forth the generative power. And this is, uh, it's really called a hexagram. And it isn't. David never saw it. Solomon worked with it, and the Greater and Lesser Keys of Solomon, which are witchcraft books. And what it is is. Uh, now, you're talking about the Jewish symbol, correct? Yes, that's correct. 
Yeah, the six-pointed star. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of rabbis who won't touch it. A lot of people don't know that. Even and Lubavitchers, they will not touch this thing. Huh. But the but it's it's commonly understood to be the star of David. It is the hexagram, the six-sided, six-pointed star rather. It is the ge the um, geometrical mark of the beast itself. Six angles right, six angles left, six in the middle, six six six. And uh, the the witches stand in this. There are thirteen witches will stand in this, and they will summon up any of the seven principalities. Uh, and we know their names. Not that it's important, but we know their names. And uh, they they draw power. It's you, when you put the hex on somebody, it comes from the word hexagram, and it's strictly witchcraft. And if you wonder why, one of the reasons they're having so much trouble over there in the Israeli state is they're flying that thing over their country everywhere. Well, obviously, yeah, it's their flag. Well, let me ask you this. The, the, what he just mentioned on the sacred name, which we consider, I consider the sacred name of Yahweh. Is that a cultic also? Well, actually, uh, Yahweh actually is the uh, tetragrammaton from um, the original name, and you can find it in Scripture. Yahweh is, if you're speaking Hebrew, uh, is the name of God. Mm -hmm. Okay? And Yahshua in Hebrew we we translate that Jesus, and I believe it's it's a legitimate translation. We're going from one language to another, and uh, names sometimes I know the proper names stay the same, but yet they're the way they're spoken phonetically is different. Uh, we we can get into that sometime if you want to, but uh, suffice it to say, no. If, if you're speaking Hebrew, that's correct. Okay, but that's okay then. All right, sure. let's go to Jim and PA. Jim and PA, you're on the air with Pastor Meyer. Go ahead, please. Yeah, good morning, Joyce and Josh. Um, good David, if you could call, make a, a, a point on just two quick co uh, well, a comment on two quick points. Uh, number one, most importantly, because you seem to be very knowledgeable, uh, Rudolf Steiner. And then number two, occasionally it pops up, you might hear that. Uh, the Illuminati have written or rewritten the Bible and have compiled uh, you know, the Christ from various stories. If you could comment on those two points, but the Illuminati may possibly have written the Bible and rewrite it, and then about that, comment on Rudolf Steiner. Okay, now I'm not familiar with Rudolf Steiner. Uh, I may have seen his work, but I don't. I can't place the name with his work. However, uh, I can I can deal with the other part of the question. The Illuminati is a very real organization. Uh, the witches refer to it as Moriah, the conquering, destroying wind. And they won't say that name above a whisper either. But what they have done is that they, uh, they will always try to use a diversion. They will uh, try to send confusion. We know the Bible is preserved by God. I use the King James Bible because I believe that's the one that God uses. I've seen the power of God in it and work through it, okay? Yep. Now, now what happens is is they will lay claim. To, they'll say, okay, we provided this information to the translators, or we did this, or we did that. They're trying to take credit for something that just isn't true. Uh, and what they're saying isn't true. They're trying to take credit for having influence on the Bible. Yeah, understood. Yeah, Steiner's name usually comes up in association with uh, Blavatsky and the Theosophical Society. Okay, yeah, he was, okay. Yeah, he was the German head of the, of the uh, Theosophical Society. So, oh, okay. you know, it involves that, the uh, you know, the, the they'll bring up white witchcraft, black witchcraft, uh, you know, the occult, things like that, yeah. Okay, we've got to move on. We've got so many callers here. Thank you very much for the phone call, Jim. Let's go to Jason in Maryland. Oh, first of all, before we get to Jason, i got to know about Copenhagen, because we, it's coming up very shortly. What should we know about Copenhagen? Yeah, I want to really quickly deal with that, if I can have about two minutes. Okay. Okay. Uh, Copenhagen is... Uh, Boy, I really need more than two minutes, but I'll, I'll do my best. Um, Copenhagen is very, very much involved in the occult. It is the old Mother Earth concept. Remember when Hitler was touting the fatherland and all the German people were welded together behind him, everything in the interest of the fatherland? Right. Well, now on a worldwide scale, global scale, it's Mother Earth. And you see... Even when people go to the university, when they graduate, they have an alma mater, don't they? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bountiful mother is what it means. 
And they advance through wisdom by 